Yes. Uh, you're the defendant in this matter? Uh, yes, I am. And uh, I, I imagine that you've been waiting a long time to tell your story. I have. Okay. So, uh, a little nervous? A little bit. All right. Um, so, at this point, what I'm just going to ask you to do is, is so, slowly and take a breath when you need to, and let's make sure the jury hears everything you have to say, okay? Okay. In trying to figure out how to approach this thing, this is a very large series of events here, so what I'm going to try to do is, is take them chronologically, that means in order of time, okay? Okay. And as I can recall, the first thing that, that I can recall happening is, is Ms. Shinola takes the stand and, and testifies basically to the fact that, that you stole a gun. Do you remember? Shinola. Shinola, thank yes, you. Yes, And yes. Yes, I do remember. Uh, did you in fact steal her gun? No, I did not. Uh, but you're... you're you're not denying you came in possession of the gun? No, I'm not. How did you come into possession of Ms. Chicago's gun? Um, she sold it to me. Uh, well, give us some more details. What were the circumstances? Well, um, she was getting divorced, is what she told me. She never wanted the gun. Um, she tried to sell it to somebody else that we work with, but he wouldn't buy it because I had a scratched off serial number on it. I'm and sorry, let's, let's stop right there. Scratched off serial number. They, they talked about this the serial number being sent off, removed from this particular gun. Do you remember that testimony? It was, it was ground down. It wasn't completely off, but it was ground down. Okay. Yes. So is it your testimony that when you received it, it was all, the serial number was already yeah, it was Yeah, it was already ground off. Okay. So she, you called what you paid for this gun? Um, I think 150 bucks. All right. Uh, was this a amicable situation? Did you have to twist around to get her to sell you the gun? No. Not why, at all. Did you, why did you buy this gun? Well, my wife, whenever I was at work, my wife would, she was a little afraid to be home alone because I was a third shifter. Um, I would leave my other gun, my little Bursa, I would leave that home for her. And um, if I went out of town, I would, without her, she would have to have the, she would have the gun at the house and I would have. I would like to have a gun with me, so that's why I purchased it. Okay. Uh, what a, there's there's uh, uh, Chicago also mentioned that there was there was underwear taken from her home. Yes. Uh, how did? And are you denying that you had these? Garments? No, I'm not so denying it. How did you come to hand, have those garments? Um, she gave them to me. We we originally started. I started at Herman Miller, back at Herman Miller in 2010 after uh, being laid off. Um, I started in her department. Um, sh she had watched something with her husband, mentioned something about panties. It got to be a running joke. Um, she, uh, over the years, she would kind of offer them to me and I would kind of ask for them. Um, one day she just gave me a pair and then when I bought the gun, she gave me a second pair. Right. So yeah. she, that's pretty much what happened. How would you characterize your relationship with Ms. Chitala before these events occurred? Uh, well, Michelle was, um, I don't want to say, she, there's a reason she worked in our department with all men, because she liked the attention. Um, we were close, but not Close, super close. Were you intimate? No. All right. So, approximately when do you come into uh, possession of this gun and the first pair of underpants? Um, the gun was in July or late summer, midsummer of 2013, and the first pair of panties was. Oh, I want to say. 2000, maybe 2012. Okay. Uh, there was testimony uh, that uh, an inference was made that, that you would drive your uh, snowmobile around her house uh, during times when you knew she wouldn't be there. That's not accurate. What um, is accurate? No. What is accurate? Um, a friend of mine and I was snowmobile, I may have a snowmobiler, um, and uh, 
there's a trail up there in Montague. It starts at the VFW, I believe. Um, she lives not too far from that, but she also lives across the street from the Westco where we would go to get gas. I think I went to her house twice. Sean was with me both times. Sean, uh, the friend you were referring to? Yes, Sean Stefanich. Okay. Um, Sean was with me both times, and what I did was I would, I, the first time I drove through her yard to let her know I was there, she was working. Um, and the second time, we just kind of drove in and drove back out. Um, so. And you said you did this to let her know that you were there. How would you drive through her yard to let her know you were there? Well, she knew I was a, a, a snowmobiler, and she said she would say once in a while, if you're up that way, you ought to stop by. Did you mention to her that you'd been there? Um, I did. She mentioned to me the one time I went through her yard, um, she wasn't home that time. Her husband was home, but she wasn't home. Okay. Um, but the second time, she had come to me the next day at work and said, uh, hey, I just missed you. I went out for a smoke. I just missed you. I seen your tracks. Okay. So, so if you she was your, home that day. So if Sorry. you drive your snowmobile to her home, she was driven her home back in those days, well, uh, and she wasn't there. Is it your understanding that she could recognize the tracks from your particular snowmobile? Objection that calls for speculation, Judge. May I rephrase? Mm -hmm. okay. Was there ever an occasion when you rode your snowmobile by her house where she identified your snowmobile by the tracks it laid? I, honestly, I wouldn't. I, I don't know if I could answer that. Okay. 2013, you've got this fire, got the, correct? Correct. Where does it go? You've got it where, in your possession. Where do you keep it? Um, I kept it in the house next to my uh, filing cabinet. And do you have any idea approximately how long, well, I don't know how long it was there. Did, it, did you ever remove it or put it in any other place other than the filing cabinet? Well, I took it with me in the van um, when I went out of town. And my wife was home. If my, if my wife was home, and I was going out of town, that's when I left the Bursa at the house for her and took 22 with me in the van. And the description of the gun is correct, it's a, it's a 22? It's a, it's a P-22, okay. yes. So uh, the, the gun would travel with you, but when you weren't traveling, it was in the, uh, the home, is that correct? I'm sorry. When, the gun, when you weren't traveling with the gun, where was the gun? Uh, the gun was at the house. Was there ever an occasion when uh, uh, someone else had access to your gun, other than you and your wife? Well, um, we never locked the house. Uh, there was a there was a, a time that somebody was coming into the house. Uh, we didn't know who it was. You could just tell by um, toilet paper. There was one time where the toilet paper got changed out. And I know I didn't do it, and my wife didn't do it. Um, there was a few other times where uh, some food was left out. I I assumed it was Kevin or my buddy Tommy. Who's Kevin and who's Tommy? Tommy is a, a friend of mine I've known since ooh, for, probably 41 years since I've been in kindergarten. Um, he he who's didn't. Kevin? Kevin is my cousin, Kevin Bloom. He worked down the street. I, I assumed maybe he stopped in to use the bathroom or something. But he, he would stop in. I asked him one time if he stopped in, and he he never um, acknowledged that he he did. But I could kind of tell it was him. Okay. Um, approach, Ryan. Sure. I'd like to take a look at proposed exhibit C. That's kind of out of order, but. Um, do you know um, Mr. Bloom's daughter? I know both of them. He has two. All right. Do you see either of them in that photograph of proposed exhibit C? I do not. Okay. Now you were here when your, your former wife testified, is that correct? Uh, yes, I was. Do you recall who, she's, who she believes stuffed up the toilet? On, on an occasion? Uh, that would be Kevin. Do you have any disagreement with that? No. 
do you know whether or not Mr. Bloom knew you had a gun in the house? He did. How do you know that? I showed him both guns, but the P-22 in particular I showed him right after I bought it. Um, and it, it, was, it was in late summer, right after I bought it, maybe a month or so after I bought it. So. You know if this was before or after uh, Ms. Harrington, Ms. Ms. Blush was killed? Uh, I showed it to him before. And did that, did the gun remain in your home or did you move it someplace else? Uh, like I said, most, it was in either in the house or in the van. And, mo and it was most mostly in the house. I didn't take it with me in the van very often. <laughs> did you lock the van? I did, but the passenger side slider door didn't lock when you hit the automatic lock, so it wasn't always locked. All right. Well, let's get to the meat of it. Sir, I, I, did, you, did you kill Ms. Blanche? I did not. You heard the test. Did you ever loan, well, you heard the testimony, um, they found Ms. Bletch's uh, DNA in your vehicle. You heard that testimony? I did. On a vibrator and on some gloves. Do you remember that? Yes. All right. Uh, do you have an explanation for how, well, first of all, were, were those objects always in your possession? Um, vibrator, I think, was my wife's. But the gloves were Kevin's. They were his softball gloves. And how are you so sure of that? Because he gave them to me in July of 2014 when he gave me the gun. Well, I lent him the gun because he wanted to, um, he said he wanted to buy one like it. And he asked to borrow it in May. He stopped by um, in May of 2014. And, um, I asked him if he had still had softballs because he was a big softball person, and he had glove cleats and whatnot. I asked him if I could borrow his stuff because there was a softball game coming up for Herman Miller that I wanted to play in. And um, at that time, he asked me if I still had the gun, and I said yes. Uh, he said he'd like to borrow it because he wanted. Judge, it calls for hearsay. Okay. Well, I'll, let me ask you a question. You recall hearing him while you to borrow this particular twenty-two? Um, yes. Judge, you can't subvert this hearsay rule by asking the question. Okay. Let me try a third way. Did Mr. <coughs> uh, Bloom request to borrow something from you? Judge, again, that, that's asking for hearsay. Well, you know, asking a question is not assertive. So it's not assertive. It's Yes, he did. What was it he asked you to, asked to borrow of you? My P-22. Okay. Was this before or after Ms. Blanche was killed? This was before. And did you ever give the P-22 black back? I did. When was that? In July. It had been maybe mid-July. He stopped back by. He had him sitting on the seat. He, what we did was he would pull up. Like at the end of my QT, my driveway when I was out throwing the frisbee to the dog in the morning. And um, I would go up, talk to him through the window. And the gun and the gloves were sitting there in a thing. And, and he said, Here's your gun back, and here's some, some of my softball stuff. And I said, Well, do you have the gloves or whatnot? And he said, I don't have any of that stuff, but you can use that. So I took it. And where did you put all that stuff? Um, the gun I put back into my house. The gloves I just threw in the van. There, there's testimony about this toolbox where a lot of the gloves and some other things were found. How 
how do because you just toss gloves in your van, how do you end up in the toolbox if you know? That's a kind of a funny story. Um, my wife and I had purchased some toys and they were in the house. Uh, are we talking about sex toys? We are. Um, they were in the house, in my closet. I think there was a picture of it in the pink room, I think they called it. Um, that was my closet. And the, they were in a shoebox in there. And my, gra my grandson would come over on Wednesdays. And my, my wife would watch him, but this particular Wednesday, um, she had something at church she had to do something and um, I had to stay up and watch him well he was in the other room we were playing hide and seek and he he got in there and brought me a, a pair of the handcuffs and um, I quickly took away from took them away from him and I thought to myself when he's gone I'm gonna get these out of the house well, the first thing I was going to do was lock them up. And then the second thing was, after I thought about it, I thought I'll just get them out of the house altogether. So that's how they ended up in the toolbox. My wife's grandfather had passed, or, yeah, being a grandfather, had passed away. And we had gotten some of the items from his house. One was this toolbox. It was in my van because we had, it, I just didn't have room for it at the time. So I took the toolbox out, um, put that stuff into the toolbox and put a lock on it. My intention was to put it in um, in the shed. And we have, I have an up upstairs part of my shed. That's where I keep like the, the Christmas stuff, the Halloween stuff, you know, whatnot. Stuff you don't use all the time. Um, I was going to put it up there just because we didn't have I didn't have any intention of using that anymore. We were we were. We were um, we weren't having sex, so uh, it was something that we just probably would never use again. So my intention was to put it up there, but we also had bought a bunch of stuff for a project that she wanted to make. She found on Pinterest, I think, and we had a just it was just loaded. The shed was just loaded, so I couldn't even get in to get to the upper section. So I put it in the van. That's how that's how it ended in the van. On the day uh, Ms. Fletch was killed, uh, you worked third shift, you said. That's correct. When is, when is, what are hours of third shift? Now? Well, at the time I was arrested, I worked 10:30 to 6:30. But at the time Miss Bletch um, was shot, I was working 9.45 to 5.45. And Miss Bletch was shot on the 29th of June, 2014. Do you know if you were working that night or not? I did go to work that night, yes. Do you have any other recollections about that day in general? Anything else that came up? Well, I, I cut the grass that day uh, between 4 and I want to say 6.30. I was cutting the grass. Um, I have a rider, but my rider wasn't working, so I had to borrow a push behind mower from Sean. And um, he works 6 to 6, I think. He's a police officer from North Shores. He works 6 to 6. And he gets home usually around 6.30. I got done cutting the grass at 6 o'clock, but I still had to trim. And, and um, I went at, at uh, 6 o'clock, I um, started to trim. After I got done trimming the main part of my yard, it was about 6.30. I went in and I wanted to call him because he usually doesn't, like I said, get home until 6.30. So I don't, I don't like to bug him. Because he might sometimes he stays over and does his, his reports, um, so I called him at six, whatever time that said. I wanted to talk to him about the snow show that was coming up in uh, Greenville. It's where we get our oil usually, and he needed to get something, some sort of something for his ski. Did uh, 
he answer the call that night? <clears throat> not, not the one, not when I first called him. He, I don't know if he was home. Nobody answered the phone, but he's, he has a tendency to leave his phones off and off the whatever the things in the batteries die on them. So let, let me ask you. Uh, take a look at Exhibit B. It says Exhibit B. Um, you, you, you were trying to tell the, the, the jury of the time that you called your friend, Stefanich. Mm -hmm. Does that document help refresh your recollection of what time you called? It says 2226. Date start and date end was 2226. Nine, nine seconds. So that would be what? 1026 minus four hours would be 626. Does that, does that reflect your recollection of that telephone? Yeah, that's about right. Now, now there's a question asked. It, does it give uh, your friend's phone number there? No. Oh. Um, from number one two three one seven 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 zero zero seven zero. Whose number is that? That would be my home phone number. The, the landline. The landline. Okay. Two number one two three one seven seven three five eight six nine. You know that, whose phone number that is? That's Sean's home phone number, landline. Have you known your wife to call Sean? If I'm over there, she she would, but no, for the most part, no. Okay. And was that a call? Well, let me ask you specifically: Was this a call from your wife that night, or did you make that call? Or did somebody else make that? No, call? I made that call. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about your van. Uh, you know the one in question. Uh, can you confirm or deny with the? the what we've been talking about, what type of van is it? Uh, it's a 2006 Dodge Grand Caravan. Okay. And is that one you drive exclusively? No. Who else drives that van? My wife. Okay. At, what, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I just, I don't want to say I got it back, but we just got her car back. She had been in an accident in the following, or the earlier in November 2015, and we were both driving it. Um, at that time so but when I first bought it she drove it and um, after a while she stopped driving it and so it's kind of an on and off thing right. let's talk about the uh, uh, night miss uh, Erica went missing uh, they're there you, you seen the, the video the, the still photos and whatnot that's been invented yet at our desk and whatnot you've seen all those correct yes and the the uh, allegation is that they've got those are pictures of your vehicle that uh, that's what they're alleging yes okay well, you tell me um about the time uh, um that that this vehicle pulls up behind the the uh, gasoline station is that your vehicle uh no can you have, do you have an explanation as to why a vehicle of that nature or, or your vehicle was seen in that area at that time of day? Uh, not that time of day, no. And when were you there? I was there earlier in the day. Uh, uh, and for what purpose? There's a um, I game. My buddies and I all kind of game. And um, they have a sports card shop over there that I was involved in a tournament over there. What kind of game are we talking about? Poker? No, it's called Magic the Gathering. And what kind of game is that? <laughs> it's it's like Pokemon, but it's a little bit more complicated. Okay. And, and because you were asked about these things by the police, correct? Yes. Tell the jury at this point what you were doing on that particular game. Well, um, Tournament started at five. Um, I had gone to Mr. Quick, I think, just before that, to get my wife some food. Um, I had to stop at Sean's because Sean had some of the cards that I needed for my deck. Um, 
and then I went to the tournament. I got there right around five. I stopped at the um, Exxon just before I bought some mints for my breath, and um, I played in the tournament till about nine o'clock. Is the Exxon where Miss Herringer was working? That is. Uh, yeah, Did you know her? I didn't know her. Um, Officer Harris said that I, I said... I don't need to know what he said, but okay, did you know I'm her? sorry. Um, I didn't know. I, I knew... I mean, if I walked in, I see, I seen her, I would recognize that I'd seen her there before. So There was I, another young lady who also worked there. Did you know her? No. You didn't know her at all? Did you know her to recognize her, the lady who was on a motorcycle that night? Oh, no. You didn't know her. And did you, did you know... Did you have any association with that particular store? Did you did, did you did, did you know the owner? Did you, did you know anything about the store other than this, this Exxon station? No, my usual stop on the way to this on the way to work was Starbucks. Um, if I stopped at the Exxon, it was either because I needed gas, uh, and that was really the only place to stop on the way to work from my house, or I wanted a Mountain Dew that day. Do you did you know then? whether or not that Exxon station has video surveillance. I had no idea whether it had it or not. Now there's testimony of a van that pulls up from behind that Exxon station and turns its lights off. Do you know anything about that? Oh, well, I heard the testimony. Do you know anything about them? Was that you? No, oh, no. There's testimony that a, a van matching yours, a description matching yours, uh, was seen turning around and then going back to that station. Do you, do you recall anything like that that night? No, I, I didn't do. I was home. Okay. Other than the one occasion when you went by and got mints, and that was about what time? It was just about 5 o'clock. Okay. Uh, other PM. than that one occasion on that day, did you have any contact with that Exxon station? No. Uh, uh, uh. And, and did you, as far as you know, did your van have any contact with it? No. Uh, were you involved in the disappearance of Ms. Herring? I was not. Let's talk about, uh, I think the last one in is uh, Ms. S. Jane, the juvenile? M. Jane. M. Jane, thank you. M. Jane. Um, do you remember picking that young lady up that night that she described? I do. Okay. Why don't we go back a couple paces? You're, where are you when you first see her? I was on um, River Road to be heading west. Day or night? Be in the morning. Sun's up? Sun's up. Okay. So, so there's, there's light? Yes. Uh, okay. And what do you see when you're going down the road? I see a young girl on the south side of the road walking and she just looked distraught. Okay. So what do you do? Well, I was on my way to Duck Lake State Park. Um, I have labs and I don't like to run them at the, um, the dog park because they get Sometimes it, the one got sick one time, so we, we try not to bring him there. So I try to bring him to different places. And I was heading out to Duck Lake. And on my way out to Duck Lake, on Weber Road, there's a, a, a snowmobile trail that crosses. And there's a put-in spot for the snowmobile. And I was going to go there first and then out to Duck Lake and then back home. What, what you saw her on the side of the road? Oh, yes. And what did you do when you saw her? Well, at first I thought I should stop, and, but she wasn't quite where I needed. And she was on the other side of the road, so um, I turned down Weber, and I thought, well, I'll go and see if she needs any help. And did you? Yes, I did. So what do you do? I went down Weber to the next road, kind of did... Uh, I was going to go around the, the lot, come back around, because she was on the other side, so I thought I'd just come up on it like that. But then I thought, well, I don't know if that road goes through, so I just did a UE turn around and came back. And 
as I'm coming down, I realize I still had a bunch of junk. My wife gets into me about that. I, I don't clean up my van as often as I should. There was a, a lot of junk on the seat, so I swung into the blueberry farm to kind of get it. So if she did need a ride, she could just hop right in. So. And I assume that's what you did? Yes. And after you did so? I'm sorry, what? After you, after you cleared the seat, what do you do? Well, I went down and pulled up next to her and asked her if she was okay. She didn't look like she was just crying and distraught, I guess. Okay. Best so way she, to look, describe it. Okay. So she, she, looks, she looks upset at the time? Yes. Okay. And what do you, are, are your windows up? My windows, no, they were down. Okay. So when you pull up uh, uh, next to her, you're sitting in the driver's seat? Yes. Passenger seat next to you? Was, yeah, it was and open. And she's outside the vehicle on the road? Yes. Okay. And so you're talking to her through the passenger seat window? Yes. All right. So did you exchange words with her? I asked her if she was okay. Um, she said no. I can't find my home, is what she said, which is kind of weird, but... Um, and how do you respond? I asked her if, if she needed where she lived, and she said she didn't know. She said something about buys. Okay. And so how did, did, did that... Did you leave? No. No. What happened then? I asked her if she needed a ride home, and she said, okay. That's how she said it. How did she get, well, at that point, did she get in the vehicle? I had to unlock the door because I was still in gear. Well, that's my next, one of my questions. Do you have one of those cars where you have to reach over and, and push the button down, or, or does it automatically engage when you go into gear or you start moving or something like that? Um, well, it, when you, if it's in park and you put it in the drive, they automatically lock. But in this particular case, I was stopped on the road. Um, the car was already in gear. Um, there's a second feature on that, on my van, that um, the, the, the locks engage after, I think it's 15 or 10 miles an hour. So. So you, did you have to unlock the door? I did. And did, and I, okay, you unlock the door. What happens when you unlock the door? She got in. All right. Now she gets in. The, the, the don't, well, now she's sitting next to you. Do you observe anything about her? She's, she's real jittery. Um, what was she, your initial impression? I thought she was on drugs or something. She looked like she was on meth. Okay. And so she's real jittery. She's sitting in the seat, right? Yeah. Does she put her seat belt on? No. Okay. Do, do you two of you have a conversation? Um... Not that I recall. Okay. Does, is, does the, your, your, what I should ask, what do, you, what do you do next after she's sitting there? Now she's sitting there, what do you do? Um, I, there was a bunch of cars parked that had been lined up behind us. So I kind of <clears throat> pulled forward a little bit and um, let the cars go by. And then I started to As I'm rolling them up, she just freaked out on me. She goes, roll them down, roll them down. And so I quickly rolled them down. But in the process of rolling them up, the locks automatically engaged. So. So, okay, now, now the doors are locked and the window's coming down, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, does she make any requests of you? Uh, not at that time, no. When does, when does the cell phone come up if it does? Um, I thought Buys Road was the next road, so I, I was, I think I was, I'd be heading, I'd be heading east at this time, so, um, as I started to go, we were almost to that next road on the left, I believe that is North Green Creek Road, but at the time I thought it was Buys, so I turned left there, as I turned, um, we have probably gone maybe 40 feet, and that's when she she said something to me, but I didn't 
with the window down, I got hearing loss in this ear really bad. So I didn't quite understand what she said. So I turned and kind of looked at her like this. And then she said, can you please let me out? Um, I don't want to use your phone. That's what she said. So what do you do? I slowed down to let her out. I reached down in the, the um, center netting thing that I had. It's a lot of junk in there. Again, that's something my wife probably rolling over. But um, the phone had, I threw the phone in there when I cleared it out. And so I reached in there and when I grabbed the phone, I come up with it like this to give it to her. It's a little flip phone, a little black flip phone. She just got, she just, her eyes got like this and she just went out the door. She went. Did you, did you push her out the door? I did not. Did you have an opportunity to try to restrain her? No. During this entire time, did you ever touch this young lady? No, I did not. Now, you heard her testify that um, that you pulled an airsoft gun. I did. I heard her you heard testify. Her. Yes. Did you, in fact, pull a no, gun? No, I did not. An airsoft gun? A no. toy gun? No. Okay. You also heard her testify that there was an orange tip to this gun. Yes. Did you have anything in your your car that was orange? Well, there's the my wife's needle tips. Like the, the one we saw in that exhibit? Yes. Were they in the car? They there was some of them in the car, yeah. Were they in where were they that they were in the car? Um the needles that they have on the exhibit were in my little black box that I had underneath. It's like a medicine slash junk box. I don't have a trunk in my um, in the van, so I can't put that stuff that's supposed to be in the trunk in a trunk. So I had to buy little lock boxes. Was it were these objects in a position where someone might be able to see them if they were sitting in the passenger seat? Um, no, that particular box wasn't, but. Like I said before, at the time, my wife had been using the car and um, we would go four times a year to Grand Rapids to get, she had a, uh, she went to the Ouija Center, I think is the name of it. That's where she, for her diabetes. Um, she would go there and get her supplies there. So it could have been in the center piece my niece also had diabetes. She also had type 1 diabetes. So she would ride with my wife as well uh, in the van. So it could have been hers too. So MJM jumps out of the vehicle, right? Right. The vehicle was still moving. Yes. Were you, and I think you just right, you were slowing down at the time, but it was still moving, correct? I was probably going about 15 miles an hour. I'm not sure exactly. I didn't really look at it, so. I just know I hit the brakes almost immediately. When? After she jumped out. Okay. Were you surprised that she jumped out? Yeah. Had you threatened her? No. Had you pointed a gun at her? No. A toy gun? No. So she jumps out, and, and what do you do? You stop the vehicle, then what happens? I do it, park, jumped out, see if she's all right. By the time I got to the back of the van, she was booking down the road, screaming, don't shoot me, don't shoot me. Well, how did you respond to that? Didn't know what to do. I just kind of freaked out, got out of there. Why did you get out of there? Why didn't you stick around and see how this story ends? I mean, I was afraid, I guess. I didn't want to get arrested or leaving this, well, I should say leaving the scene, but having an accident like that. I, didn't, I just didn't want nothing to do with it. She was acting funny. She was, I don't exactly know how to describe it. She was just, she just, I didn't want to be there. So I left. Okay. Um, there's been some testimony that um, um, you had insulin, a bottle of insulin in, in the van, or that there was a bottle of insulin found in the van. Do you know, first of all, did you put that insulin in there? I think, I think I did, yes. Do you know how long it had been in there? Oh. Months. Do you know whether or not insulin needs to be refrigerated? Um, it, 
doesn't have to be refrigerated. Um, it stays a lot fresher if it is, but it doesn't have to be. Why do you have insulin in your vehicle? Because both my wife and my niece are diabetic, and my wife is what's called a brittle diabetic, and that means just means that one minute her blood sugar could be 80, which is really low. The next minute it could be 500, which is really high. And if it's 500, she has a pump, but the pump won't give it her enough insulin fast enough, so she has to give herself a shot. And so why do you have insulin? Why, why do I have, have insulin? insulin in the vehicle? For her, she, like I said, she was driving the van. Um, if we're ever out anywhere, my wife is notorious for taking a shower, taking her pump off, and then forgetting to put her pump back on. So we'll be out somewhere, and I'll go, she'll go, I'm not feeling good. And I go, you, get, you put your pump back on? She'll go, oh, I forgot. So if her blood sugar's high, um, she gets what's called acidosis. If she gets too high, which is very dangerous for a, a diabetic. So if I don't have, we don't have the insulin for her, we either have to rush home. Sometimes we, there was one time we were all the way in Grand Rapids um, shopping for, I think it wasn't Grand Rapids, Holland. It was, uh, she liked to go to that, Michael's. You know, at least an hour away from home, so that was the purpose of the insulin in the van. Uh, tell us about your, your grandfather's house. Uh, uh, the one where they find all the bleach in the basement. The, the bleach, the bleach and the, my, gra my grandfather was 98 when he, when he passed in 2011. But he, he was going up and down the stairs up until he was 92. His, that's where they, my grandma and him had all the laundry uh, stuff. It was all in the basement. And that's where he did his laundry, was down in the basement. Um, in 2005, I think, my mom, um, my dad had passed away in 95, so my mom always well, took care of him. Um, she had his stuff moved up to the, I guess it would be the mudroom of the house, so, uh, but he would, he left all of his, the Clorox boxes and the Tide boxes and all that down in the basement, so. Did you ever use, well, did you ever use the bleach or the Tide or whatever it was that was down that big, or anything else to, to, uh, no, no. to remove uh, uh, anything other than ketchup from a shirt? Did you ever use it to remove a, uh, DNA or, or fingerprints or any other thing that you might think is evidence? No, that, that that was there in 2000, well like I said, 2005 I think is when all that stuff up, so all that stuff that was down there was what Grandpa left down there. Did you use that stuff at all? No, I don't. And who else had access to that home? Is there anyone else besides you? Well, grandpa passed away in 2011. My brother Larry was the executor, and um, he had a key to the home, and my wife had a key to the home because we, when my mom passed in 2006, um, she was taking grandpa three times a week to uh, um, breakfast. So when she passed, my wife and I took over. So but my grandpa gave us a key, so in case we needed to get in to see him or... So I had access and Larry had access. Um, when in March of 2013, I stopped over the house after the snow and there were, a pipe had broke off in the basement and there was like, I don't know, this much water in the basement. I went, I went to let myself in with the key, and the key was wouldn't work. And I found out later that Ben had borrowed Larry's key and broke the key off and replaced the lock. So I didn't have any access to the house at all. So I had to kick in the back basement door to get into the house to find out what was going on, and eventually to get in and shut the water off. Um, so that the, we wouldn't flood anymore. Uh, there's been evidence introduced of, of 
hard drives and computers in your home. Uh, first of all, there was a computer in the living room. Uh, from whence did that computer come? Uh, there was two computers in the living room. One was an e-machine and one was a gateway. Um, in 2015, a friend of mine, Jim Batch, uh, he, he had gotten di divorced, well, was getting divorced from his wife, bought a house, they got, they reconciled, he was selling his house, and he had, him and his son had, had their stuff in the, um, in the garage, and they didn't need it anymore, and he asked my wife and I if we needed anything, if we wanted to, because my wife was a, uh, a member of the Salvation Army in Grand Haven if we wanted to donate any of that stuff and we grabbed a bunch of stuff and I grabbed the computers so did you did you actually use any of those computers did no you they no they uh, once again I, I I collect stuff sometimes so it just sat there until I was gonna my intention was to get to it but I never got around to it you said there were two computers in the living room yes did you use either one no I did not there was a computer in your bedroom, or in a bedroom, right? There were, well, a tower is what you're talking about, yes, right? Thank you. Yeah, a tower. There was a tower, yes, an ASUS okay. tower. Did you use that one? I did. And the monitor there for that purpose? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, there's been uh, evidence introduced <coughs> indicating that you uh, had hard drives, uh, uh, and, and from the description, it looked sound like they were secreted around the house. One was in a heating duct or cooling duct, and yeah, there was someplace else that was kind of secret. Do you know, first of all, were these your hard drives? Uh, yeah, they were. And why were they placed in the position, in the location they were placed? Well, um, the one was in the uh, drawer of, of the bed, the bedroom, which was right next to where, I, where the computer was. That was the one I, I used. The other one was just a backup. Um, in case somebody came in and stole my stuff, I had a backup for it. The other part was the one that I used that was in the um, uh, dresser drawer. Something happened to it, and it only said I had 5% left on it, so that's why I, kind of why I got the second one, because I wasn't sure if there was something wrong with it and if it would fail on me or not, so I bought a second one. My hard drive, I, on my um, ASUS, I had to have, I think I had that had that fixed twice or three times. So originally, the first hard drive was for that, and then the second hard drive was to back up the second hard drive because I, I think I screwed that one up. So how many of, of the of your computer system? What worked and what what actually worked? What were you actually using? That I was using the ASUS. Um, in the house, there was the ASUS, that was mine to use. We had a, um, a laptop, an older laptop, I think it was a Hilo Packard that my wife, we bought for my wife way back, and then she had a Surface, and then she had her phone. So, but the ASUS was mine, I used the ASUS. I mainly just gamed on it. That was the ASUS computer was bought. It was a, it was a one terabyte, I think. One terabyte, and it was um, it was built as a gaming computer. So, you heard testimony in, in this trial about uh, a police officer who tried to call your wife and left messages. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah, that would be Corporal Hare. Yes, uh, I do remember that. And that they, uh, the testimony was that it was left on a recording machine, a tape recorder. My wife, her memory is not the best. The, um, the tape machine that she's talking about was an AT&T I got when I first, when I first moved into that house, which was back in 97, I think. We hadn't used that tape recorder one. I want to say we got the new one shortly after we got married, which would have been 2004. And that was just a digital one. So that tape one we had, we had used in fact, I don't think we. Even, I don't think it was in the house when the police came. I think I should have thrown that one out. Actually. So how did they leave the message then? She. He called. Um, he called. Twice to the home phone. 
three times to the home phone. And he called my wife's cell phone, and that's where those recordings came from. It's my wife's cell phone. So when he when he said he left a message that time, and then they find these messages later on on that on that exhibit, those are recordings from your wife's cell phone. They are. They're not from the home phone. Does your wife keep her own phone? Or do you, is there no, she has her own phone. She's, I have the reason I have a cell phone is because she is diabetic. And she needed to be able to get a hold of me. I didn't really want a phone at all. I didn't need one. I didn't think I needed one, but she purchased one for me. Um, uh, let's talk about um, um, the. I, I think the script was tens of thousands of uh, S and M porn videos and tapes that that the police found on your. Computers and hard drives. Did you, in fact, download those things? I did. Um, the description was that they were pretty horrific. Is is there an explanation for why you had that material? Um, my what? My wife. She had an abortion in 2010. Um, we we tried. The, the sex life was kind of downhill after that. We tried a few things. We tried toys and um, lingerie and videos and whatnot. But eventually, um, we just stopped having sex. So I guess that was my outlet. I, I don't know any other way to put it. It's kind of embarrassing. But. Um, there was testimony came to talk to you, you allowed them to go through the van, but you didn't give them your cell phone, and your cell phone was right by your keys. You remember that portion of the trial? I do. Why? Is it, first of all, is it accurate? Did you know? No, it's not. I showed them my phone. Explain this little circumstance. What, what happened? Well, Corporal Hare and Sergeant Baker came to my house um, on May 7th. I think it was around 11 or 10. Knocked on the door. Um, I opened the door, the dog went out. We talked about the dog a little bit. Corporal Hare, he seemed more interested in dressing the part than he did investigating. Sergeant Baker was taking notes. Corporal Hare didn't take any notes, as far as I could tell. He was asking me questions. We got talking about Sean because they worked with Sean. We talked for, I don't know, maybe a minute or two about that. Stephanie is Sean's wife. Works over there at the um, dispatch also. Um, but they, they asked me um, where I was. I explained to them that I was at the tournament. I stopped at the uh, Exxon. Um, all the stuff that, that uh, uh, I said earlier, I told him about. He asked me if I had a phone, and I told him yes. I, or he asked me what it was. He asked me um, what I stopped at the Exxon for. And I, I said, I stopped for mints. And I opened up the door, and I reached in, and I grabbed the mints to show them. And as I grabbed the mints, my phone was there, too, so I grabbed my phone. And we got talking about um, Sean's cell phone. I always got a, a nice phone, and I got a dumb phone. And we were talking about the phone for, like, I don't know, maybe 20, 20 30 seconds, and I just put it back in the house. So Was it ever requested of you again? It was. Um, they... We, they finished the interview. We went to the van. Um, I opened up the van. I told them they could go in and look, whatever they needed to do. I had to lower the seats in the back because the seats were, uh, what do they call those, uh, stone go seats in the back. I had to lower the seats for them. They looked around. They did their little cursory look. Um, and then they left. And about 5 o'clock, he called back to the house. That's when he asked it, if I could bring the phone in. He said he had forgot to ask me if he could get the phone for me. And I said, I can't bring it in right now. My wife has it. She went to church for some function she did on Tuesdays. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I think, was her function day. And um, I said, but um, I can bring it in after. She gets home around 9 o'clock. I'll drop it on the way to, to work. And he said, well, no. And I said, well, can I give it to Sean? Sean, I'll bring it in to you. I'll just drop it off to Sean, and Sean can bring it to you when he goes to work tomorrow. 
And he said, that's all great. Just drop it off in the morning. So I said, okay. So that was what our conversation was about three, four minutes long. Did you ever drop off the phone? Did I? Yes. Tell me, uh, um, they found a, a list of, uh, of people that, that have been identified as, as uh, serial killers or victims of serial killers in, in your handwriting. Uh, am I remembering that correctly or, or just a type list? It was a type list. Okay. Why have you got a list of serial killers? Um, I don't have any work in a shop, but, and, and when Miss Herringer went missing, the rumors were, you know, flying around, and there happened to be somebody that I work with that thought it was maybe a serial killer or something like that. So, um, at, at that time, we were going up to... Um, at lunch, we were going up to uh, Speedway and getting our lunch or whatever. And we printed up that list. Um, he wanted to go over it or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was, but we that's what he printed it up for. So Well, I printed it up, but he was only a temp. So he didn't really have access to the computers. Tell me about that uh, Vix folder. The what? The Vix folder. Well, I don't trust the police. They, they're they human, they make mistakes just like everybody else. When Corporal Hare came to the house, I did feel very good about it. He kept calling, asking my wife questions. Um, I uh, created the JLH folder, which was Jessica's, to put my um, phone records and anything that I could to prove where I was that day because if they came back I wanted to make sure that we had I had everything in, in order for them. Um, when Miss Bletch was um, killed at the time um, it was a hit and run when I was at work I had gone to work that night and somebody named Bubba come up to me and he said uh did you hear about the hit and run they had out in Automobile Road? And he said there was a van, a silver van involved. So I thought to myself, I'm going to, if they come because it's a silver van, they came to me before, I'm going to have this stuff ready for them. So I created the RSB folder to put the phone records or anything in there that I needed to in that folder and combine them into a a victims folder, a VIX folder, I think is how the police usually call it. That's where the VIX came, VIX folder came from. What about the MJN? Did you have a folder for her? Or no. Nothing? Nothing. Mr. Willis, you're charged with, in this case, of. Uh, Miss Bletch. Did you, in fact, do that? I did not. I did not kill Miss Bletch. I wasn't even there. I was home. One Where McCormick's is, the, the, the station, gas station, that they have a picture of a silver or a silver or a white man driving by. You know, like the right? one on Bard, right? The, is that the, the one you're talking about? They, they put a picture of it in as exhibit. It's Bard and Russell. Okay. How far away from your home Ooh. is that particular gas station? 
maybe 12 miles as crow flies. Okay. Uh, have you ever, uh, have you ever um, uh, patronized that station? I don't think so. I don't usually go with that. If I went up that way, it would have only been for Michigan's Adventure with my niece or my nephew. But your, but your understanding is about 12 miles from your home. As a crow flies, yeah. Do you have any idea how long it takes you to drive from that location to your home? 23 minutes. Okay. Uh, do you know where Mr. Bloom lives, Kevin Bloom? Is yes, I do. How close or how far? About uh, three minutes. The McCormick's gas station from Mr. Bloom's home. About three, three minutes. So obviously his home is closer than yours. Oh yeah. Uh, you you listened to the testimony in, in this case. Uh, you know Miss Blake was killed on Airline Road, correct? Um, automobile Road. Automobile Road. There's something to do with transportation. Yeah. Yes. Automobile Road. Correct? Automobile Road. All right. Now, uh, do you know approximately where that location is? Approximately. How far is that from your home? About the same distance. I, I think the McCormick's is just before the highway there. Do you have an estimate as how far it is from Mr. Bloom's home? About the same, maybe three minutes. Thank you.